Hey. Hi. I'm Don Bailey. Nice to meet you. I'm Charlie Rising Guy. Good to meet you, Charlie. Are you the cleanup boy around here? Or what do you do? I'm the president. Here. <laughs> I'm meeting with the president. Do you believe that? <laughs> So Charlie, tell me about this place. What do you guys do here? I'm, I mean, I was here the other day and I was just in awe. This is incredible. So what we are is we're a nonprofit organization. We are a, what you would call a maker space. Uh, we're a collective of people who have gotten together and filled out this, this warehouse with tools. Um, wow. How big is this place? We're 8,000 square feet. Wow, holy mackerel. That's awesome. I love it. So are you going to show us around? Yeah, I will. Okay. Um, Where are we off to now, Charlie? Uh, off, uh, we're off to the machine shop next. This is uh, kind of your general purpose metalworking uh, as opposed to the high production run. And I see we have Brandon here tinkering on an engine. Um, what what uh, is this engine? Wait a minute. This, this goes on a model airplane, right? Uh, no. That'd be a pretty <laughs> awesome model airplane, though. <laughs> Um, Hi, you're Brandon? Yes, I'm Brandon. I'm Don. Good to meet you, nice bud. Nice to meet you, Don. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is an Onan. It's a two-cylinder, 18-horsepower engine from an old garden tractor. And um, about a summer or so ago, I fuel-injected it. So I actually had the fuel injector here, and then this is the, the throttle here run by a servo. Yeah. You can kind of see the throttle down in there. Oh, yep, yep, <laughs> yep. And so I had an Arduino actually running, an uh, Arduino microcontroller running the fuel injection strategy. And I was just taking the uh, speed off the uh, the flywheel, off the gear teeth on it, uh, and it ran okay. But I want to make it a little better, so I've since then I've been working on actually making a port injection. So now I've got uh, one injector here. It's pretty stuck in there. <coughs> this is just a, a Delphi injector from a, a GM car. Yep, yep. Then I took a piece of hex stock and turned it out in the lathe to make it fit. Um, and then these are 3D printed. These uh, adapters, basically, cool. they look. Uh, Look like this. This is made out of ABS, but these are actually nylon, so these will be fuel resistant. So who did this? I, I did that here too as well. So you got a 3D printer? Yeah, 3D yep, printer as well. Awesome. So, and then um, in order to do port injection, I needed you know, more resolution on what the timing is. So I've got these gear teeth sensors, um, and I machined some blocks that are inside the uh, cam cover. So one actually reads off the teeth on the cam gear, and the other one gets uh, absolute position off this set screw here. So. Are you an engineer? Yes, I am. <laughs> Well, that's you, that's you engine analysis that's, for a living, <laughs> that's starting to make some sense now because well, what a breeding ground this place is, man! I'm telling you, and, and, and the fact that you have all this at your fingertips to use is pretty cool. Fantastic, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> it's cool. Great. So, how much time do you spend down here? Uh, it, it varies depending on what's on my life, but there are times when I'm like here every night after work, and other times you know I'm just gone for a while. Single? But, uh, yeah, I'm dating, but you know, not married. Yeah, uh, still single. That's <laughs> a, so you're not you're not. Corvette. He's he's very. Oh so oh oh oh. oh. Uh oh, I know about Corvettes. <laughs> So, yeah, I do a lot of work on cars, too. I've got an older car in the story right now. Have you? So I'm planning on doing some stuff for that here, too. That's great. What a what a great concept. Well, thanks very much for showing it to us. No Appreciate it. What do we got over here now? So, yeah, this is our, this is our metal lathe here. It's an Acer. Yep. Uh, this thing, uh, it's just all kinds of handy. Guy, look, a lathe. <laughs> you know what that is now, right? <laughs> well, this is, Glenn is figuring out. This is a lathe, and this is a mill. Yep. Yeah, because we just did two days of shooting on a lathe. Oh, well, okay, yeah, so you know a lot more about it than I do already. <laughs> this is a great bridge port too, this variable speed. Oh yeah, yeah, the variable speed head is really nice. Where'd that come from? I don't know. It's been here since before I started. I, we probably bought it at one point. Yeah. I heard it didn't cost us that much. I, I think we got it from someone who was, we bought it from someone who must have been some sort of friend or something like that. It's a little worse for the wear. It's getting older. It's okay. It's a, you know, it's the fact enough. that it's variable speed and all that. No, that's great. That's a serious bandsaw. I just bought this for the zone uh, about two weeks ago. It was it was like a, a, I don't know, like a movie bringing in. We had so many people lined up watching it. It's such a spectacle. Don't uh, you got an armor metal cut on here or something? We do, yeah. And actually, one of the settings here says armor. Oh, here you go, armor plate. <laughs> Shows you the speeds and feeds. Yeah, that's pretty great. And I just rebuilt the speed dial recently, too. You know, it's cool. So we get a piece of tool like this, and then we have yeah. everything we need to fix it here, too. Beautiful. It, it worked when we got it. But so you, you got a welder there for the blades as yeah. well, so when the blades break or you make a new one? Yeah. Which is good because the blades are kind of big for this guy. Yeah, they're, they're not cheap. Uh, 16, 165 inches, 13 feet 9 inches, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a serious blade. Very excited about this. Very cool. We've already used it for a couple things, but yeah, we're working on getting the training set up so everyone can use it. Take a look at a, at a, at a video we did when we went out uh, 
to the investment casting company. Okay. And uh, they had a what I would call a hyperbolic saw. This thing revved up. It must have revved up at 10,000 feet a minute, and it must have had some kind of carbide blade on it. And this thing cut through steel in seconds. And sparks flew everywhere. It was like a grinding wheel. I mean, they just put this thing down. And went and the sparks are like all over the place. Take a look at that. that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, it was very cool. We got we got some pretty good shot of it. So a little band saw as well, horizontal. That was donated to um, I3 by Jake because we won a competition, is that right? Uh, yeah, that seems to sound about right. Good. Uh, and then this sander behind you, this is a new addition. For a long time we we had the, the little bench top uh, yeah. belt and disc sanders and they really bogged down. But this guy, uh, another one that's kind of an antique, but after a little bit of cleaning up, it works great. You can see it's getting used from all the look. Yeah, so what do you guys do about perishables, like, you know, the sandpaper and that sort of thing? Uh, it comes out of the budget for the particular zone. Is that what it does? So okay. Up here. I just bought a bunch off at Master at once. And okay. Then, um, you know, ideally, now that the I'm kind of new to running this zone, but I'm going to track that stuff and then get a feel for how many do we use in a given year. And yeah. Next year, say, last year I need to spend $100 on belts, so I need at least that much for just belts this year. So that's your budget. So yeah, yeah. I try to track it that Beautiful. Way. And you got polishers and post grinders and you even got a surface grinder yeah, over there. A surface grinder. Yeah. It doesn't get a lot of use, but it's pretty good. It's, uh, I know that's uh, used quite a bit for subjective holding. Yeah. It's really necessary for that. And you got a, a beautiful compressor. Yeah, that's uh, new as of last year. That's Rotary, a, the screw. Uh, screw compressor, yeah. 10 cores with integrated dryer. Um, the Lego on top is uh, for noise suppression. Ah. That's pretty quiet, really. <laughs> yeah. You got to get some Legos in two plays. <laughs> <laughs> Another polisher and a little bandsaw. Yep. Uh, this was our old vertical bandsaw. It was just a horizontal one that had a little cable and things. So. Yeah, now you got a serious saw. You went from this, you went from this to that. Yeah. yeah. That's great. In one fell swoop. Um, so we move on to our wood shop now. Okay. Um, this is one of our most used zones. You can see someone's still trying to get use out of it as we're filming. This is a saw stop table saw. This was one of the first tool purchases we did as a group. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, this is the type of saw where if you accidentally run your finger into the blade, it'll it stops stop it. the blade. Yeah, and uh, you can see we've saved a couple, a couple fingers. Not yeah. something I want to do. Yeah, no, it's not. It's it's. Scary. I don't need to. I don't need to prove that it works. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. See, so we got again a drill press, a planer. It looks like. Yep, a planer, uh, a new uh, belt sander. Um, that's a routing table set up. And then we've got another routing table that's set up for various bits. Yep. Uh, we've got a joiner back there, uh -huh. um, a scroll saw and lathe. Actually, a wood lathe. Um, this is Greg. He, Greg, our coordinator for the wood shop. Hi, nice meeting you. Good meeting you. I'm Don. Hi, Don. I'm Greg. Good to meet you, Greg. The, the wood shop uh, zone coordinator. So you're the boss here? No. No. You're, you're the servant here. Yeah, I'm the servant. Okay. <laughs> most of our tools are open for most people to use. There are a few that require some specialized training so that people learn about... Keeping, you, keeping fingers. Y yes, but using the tool here and in our environment. It's different than using it at home or using it in your shop. Sure. Here, everybody must clean everything up and put it back to a normal state when they're done. Understood. So the next person walking in doesn't find everything all... Um, Disconglobulated yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. bad enough. It happens anyway, but yeah. that's really our goal. That's great. So this is another zone. So this is all the part of the woodworking zone here. This is yes. the woodworking zone. Yeah, this and is great. This is our construction space, which means if you're going to build something, um, like Ron here who's working on a kitchen cabinet, he can't really build it here. There's not enough space. He can cut everything and get everything all set but he can't if he puts it together here he has to get it out the same afternoon yeah sure I could see that yeah we have a we have some wood storage around the corner there that members can bring in and like he brought in four sheets of plywood he can store them there he's ready to use them they're available Charlie Charlie said he's got his over there yeah I've got a little bit of plywood right there and then I've got a whole shelf of if, if you want a project I can do one here that I did a couple weeks ago we have an open shop about once a month 
and I did a project with the router that we could do for you on that. Okay, do you want to run through that at all or what or not? I, I don't know if we, we're going to have time to do that, you think? Run through a project real quick? Um, what time is it? Five minutes. Let's do it. Right. Hey, uh, I wanted to make a, a sign base to put letters in, either engraved in or, or cut them with a laser. So this is the shape that I came up with. So I designed this shape on a, a 2D CAD system, and I cut this template on the laser cutter. Beautiful. Then I can take this template and double stick tape and follow using that bearing. The bearing will ride on this masonite template. Yep. And so when we're done, it will be like this, and I can make 50 of them, and they'll all be the same. Beautiful. And then with a putty knife or a screwdriver, which I don't happen to have on my hand, that double stick tape pops just right off. So you take that off and there you go, you got a part. Right. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for showing us. All right. Appreciate you uh, taking the time to teach all these people the, the art of woodworking, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Where are we off to now, Charlie? Uh, next, we're actually going to take a turn to the left and go into our tool crib. What are you making here? So Amy likes to make uh, things out of recycled skateboards. Yes. Oh. Uh, I like the skateboard and I have a lot of friends with skateboard. So I get a lot of um, used and old cracked boards from friends or skate shops. Um, so I made a few things like picture frames. Um, awesome. Posters. Oh. Now who the hell would have thought out of a skateboard, right? That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's always dyed really nice and stuff. Yeah. Are you marketing any of this stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's always basically everything I've made so far. That's that's pretty cool. Um, it's nice and curved. Yeah. A little planter box. Wow. So, um, that's very cool. And this what what would you call this area? This is the tool crib. Uh, this is where we have all of our little hand tools and I see. lots of work. So you just happen to be in this space. Is it, but this is where you would normally work, right here on the tool crib? Yeah, usually here over there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, discovered I3. And, uh, How long have you been coming here? I was here like three months, a couple months. What a great way to spend an evening, isn't it? Every week. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Well, you're much too pretty to be staying here all the time. You need to get out a little bit. I try to, but it's hard. Would you rather be here? Sometimes. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good. So thank you. Appreciate thank you. you showing it to us. Uh, we're going to actually go to one of the most used zones in our uh, space right now, the laser cutters. You can see the lasers are still in use uh, as we come in filming. Uh, and they've set up a little display of all the things that have made. Wow. Cut everything from leather to wood to plastic, and we can even do some thin metal. Wow. Uh, this is Jamie. Uh, she's made a really cool cape. Jamie? Yeah. Hi, Jamie. I'm Don. Hi. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. You made that? Yep. That's pretty awesome. Yep. It's a uh, laser cut velvet and then satin underneath. Really? Yep. Really? Wow. That is cool. That's very cool. <laughs> Great idea. Wow. Who would have thunk? <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of sewing anyway, so uh, when I joined I3 and had the opportunity to use a laser cutter, then it just made sense to me at least to combine the laser cutter with regular sewing. Sure. As, you know, actual garment that has laser cut pattern on it. It's beautiful. I love it. Thank you. So, and you actually did the sewing as well? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's just a regular sewing pattern. You know, as soon as it comes off the laser, it's just like it got cut by a pair of scissors. It's just prettier. Yeah. Did you sew it here? Mm-hmm. Oh, great. So, so tell me about the lasers. These are must be pretty powerful. How, what's, what's the wattage on them? Like 80 watt, 100 watt? They or? are 150 watt lasers. Okay. Uh, we imported them directly from China. 
Um, and they've been they've served us pretty well. Um, these two machines are identical. So, so the, the facility bought these? Yes, we we ran a fundraiser for one, and then a member bought uh, this one for himself. But since he he wasn't allowed to store it in his garage. Um, it's been sitting here, and one of our policies is, is if you have a really cool piece of equipment that, you know, somebody you to share it. won't let you take home, you need to share it, and he's very good about that, and we're very good about... Uh, That's wonderful. Uh, this was done by Mike and Jamie. Hey, Mike. Is Mike is Hi. Hey, Mike. Um, hi. Don, good to see you. Good to see you. So, so this is a um, variety of things that I've made on the laser. Um, wooden, uh, wooden paper lamp, um, just some art projects out of MDF and acrylic, um, some leather armor that I laser cut all of the individual pieces. So who designs all this stuff? You guys design it as well? Yeah, pretty well. Some of these, some of these designs, I found online and just cut and put together. Like this is a design that's actually available on the internet for free, so anybody can just download it and make something like this. Huh. And this is really cool because it shows that you can combine the different flat pieces that the laser makes into something that's like really cool in 3D and intermeshes with itself in a way that I couldn't even fathom until I actually made it myself. Huh. So when you made that when you made that cape, I guess what I call it a cape. Yeah. Yes. And so the, I see you have a similar design over there. Yeah. Yeah. So the great thing about uh, doing stuff in any vector graphics program, once I have the design, I can put it on anything. Yeah. So I had this. I, it's uh, supposed to be like a hurricane setup. That's what the stuff on the, the hurricane cape was. And so we can do the same thing on uh, pieces of paper and make art like this. It's the same design. It's just instead of being on fabric, it's on pieces yeah. of paper. And wow, I even did the same thing where I made a mask to go with uh, the costume that I made. So this is actually laser cut leather. So huh. uh, the outside is cut out and then this is actually etched into the leather itself. Uh, and so the way that I did that was just the same uh, the same design that I used on everything else. So did you paint it afterwards or before? Afterwards. Yeah, afterward, yeah. Huh. Also very cool. And how did you shape it? This is something you can do with any any piece of leather. You just get the leather wet, and then you can kind Put of it over form it around your face, and then it'll hold its shape. So that's how we did uh, this mask, and the gauntlets were also shaped like that. We just huh. you know kind of fold them around a form, like a cylindrical form, and then they kind of hold an arm-like shape. And this is another piece of leather that I made that also has an interesting <laughs> set of forms. So you can, kind of, you cool. can make them into curly cues, you can kind of give it texture and depth to it. How do I look, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> huh? is, it, is it me? Yeah. <laughs> That's you very like neat. a very dragon-like person. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word on the street. I'm a dragon-like person. <laughs> yeah. And what's all this? This is all part of, uh, oh, this is all electrical stuff, right? Yes, this yeah. is electronic component <laughs> overflow. Well, you'll see why we need the overflow okay. when we get to the electronics room. Amy, thank you. Yep. It's lovely. I like all the work you're doing. Thank Good you. Good seeing you. Thank, thank you, you so for much. showing us. You bet. Thank you, guys.